Well, this is a first course in applied mathematics, so uh, we better get on with some applications. And according to my calculations, you know, barely, we've been rolling for barely an hour now, and uh, we are already in a position where I can start talking about applications. So I picked one. We're going to deal with lots of different applications uh, in the course, but I picked one. Um, I'm an applied mathematician, by the way, and I talk to engineers all the time. Just in the last few years, I've been working with uh, mechanical engineers, heat transfer engineers, petroleum engineers, um, photonics experts, uh, all kinds of different people I talk to every day as an applied mathematician. Um, I decided to pick electric circuits to start us off because the reason is I think it's something that a lot of people are familiar with from, you know, high school physics, um, whatever. Uh, so I thought I'd deal with that. And there are some famous names involved, some famous uh, names that you will have heard of. And we can put those in perspective. We can lay these out into our framework. Um, OK, so, uh, you know, if an engineer comes to you with a problem, you, you, as an applied mathematician, you talk to them. And you learn what you can about what they do. They're the experts in the physics. You're the expert in the applied mathematics. And talking to my, um, talking to my uh, electrical engineering friends, they tell me that if they've got uh, two terminals, across which they've got a voltage drop, uh, then uh, if there's a wire con connecting those two terminals, then a current can flow. OK. Interesting. I believe you. Uh, I'm looking at that now, and I hope you are too. I'm looking at that. They've just drawn that little picture for me. And I, all I can see is uh, a graph. All I can see is two nodes and one edge. Now, I so you know what? Let me la label that node I because this is what I see, and node A, and that's edge A. Okay, that's what I see as an applied mathematician. Um, now, uh, my electrical engineer friend said that if there's a voltage drop across here, so I'm going to assign my node variables now, x i, to be the voltage at uh, node i. OK, an xj will be the... So, of course, there'll be a, an xj there, which will be a voltage here. OK, a, a node j. So instead now of my very generic term, I called them node potentials. I called them d generic term deliberately because we're going to fit many different substitutions into that word potential. In this electrical circuit problem, our potential is a voltage. OK. Now, uh, Another thing I'm told is that there's a famous name associated with this famous person uh, who came along and told me all about uh, electric circuits, or not me sp specifically, um, Ohm. And uh, this chap had a law, well, let's call it Ohm's law. And he told me the following thing. By the way, before I go on, let me let my edge variable which I called a flux before, that is now going to be equal to the current. Because my friend told me that there's a current in this uh, conductor, okay, in this wire that's connecting the two terminals, okay? So my, my, my edge fluxes are now currents, when I'm talking to my electrical engineer, and uh, my node potentials are voltages. And Ohm came along and told me that if I want to know what the current Oh, by the way, so we call that WA. Remember, that's what one notation was before. He told, told me that the current in here is minus some positive constant, I'll come back to that in a second, times xj minus xa. And by the way, in writing down Ohm's law here, I've accounted for my choice of this direction on the, uh, on the, on the, the edge. I've picked the edge direction arbitrarily, OK? But now I'm using Ohm, and he told me that current flows uh, along a, down a voltage drop. It's very important to keep your uh, signs uh, right. Otherwise, it's embarrassing if you're an applied mathematician. You can't even get your signs right. I've messed up as well. I always uh, uh, try to fix them if I can. Let's see if I've got it right here. By the way, CA, before we go on, is what we call a conduct... Well, I, it's not me. My electrical engineer friend told me it's called a conductance. 
okay? And it's positive. It's a positive um, material constant. Material just means, you know, what's the thing made of? So, you know, it will generally be metal. And uh, anyway, it's basically telling you how readily does a current conduct down this, um, down this physical thing, the, the conductor. Okay, now, uh, let's just, uh, let me just give myself a bit more space here. Um, let's just suppose then, suppose that xj was 1, okay, so this was 1, and xi uh, was 0, okay, so this is, this is now 0. Um, then wa, if I'm not mistaken, is minus ca, according to Ohm's law, right, because that's 1 and that's 0. So what that tells me is that the current actually is in this direction because this is a this is a negative quantity okay so it's in the negative direction relative to my designation of where the positive direction is okay that's very important and what that says is because this is a higher potential than this the current flows along the direction of the voltage drop that's what my electrical engineer said, so I better make sure I, uh, I do what uh, he or she tells me. Okay, now, it turns out that, uh, that's very interesting, so let's just put a little uh, bubble around that. There's another famous person in this uh, arena, and uh, the name is Kirchhoff. I don't know if you've come across uh, the name Kirchhoff before, maybe you have. Kirchhoff. Okay, and he came along with what is has become known as the current law. Okay, and um, let me just draw a little picture over here on the right. This is a picture of a node with, which is a terminal, with several conductors coming in, several edges coming in, all of them carrying a different current. I've still called them flux on this, but uh, it's a current now, okay, and Kirchhoff told me, it's a very natural thing, he just basically said, well, let me write it down, unless a node is connected to a current source, by the way, I'm told current sources are known uh, colloquially as batteries, other things too, uh, a current source then the net current out of a node is equal to zero. Okay, so he tells me that uh, in this particular graph, a uh, little graph you see, a little pit, bit of a circuit you see here, if that's a blue terminal and it's got those four conductors coming in, in this particular picture then, we would say that the net, so let's write down here uh, what the net current out of that node is. Well, WD look is positive, isn't it? So then WD, uh, and it looks like all the other arrows are in. So what Kirchhoff current law would say, and by the way, I'm gonna use KCL because who wants to keep writing down Kirchhoff current law? But so WD minus WA minus WB minus WC is equal to zero, okay? Because that's the net current out of node, uh, the node there, the blue node, and uh, Kirchhoff current law, if it's not connected to a battery, he tells me that the, the net current is zero. It's basically conservation of current. You can't just create current from nowhere. Whatever goes in must come out somewhere, okay? Very natural, natural law. Okay, let me just rewrite my, um, Ohm's law up here. Okay, that's my Ohm's law. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to get rid of what I just wrote, and I'm going to uh, draw my famous uh, graph again. We've seen this several times. We we love this graph. We are going to look at it though in a completely different light, because now. Now that I'm associating with my electrical engineering friends, I am looking at this as a electric circuit and not an altogether trivial one. And by the way, this is just an example. Any uh, graph I can uh, make more complicated and consider it as an electric circuit. I seem to have lost, I've just realized I've lost my 
Ohm's, Ohm's law. So let me write it down again. That's my typical, typical Ohm's law, okay? Now you remember that, uh, that this matrix, that this uh, graph has a matrix associated with it, known as the, uh, uh, known as the incidence matrix. And this is going to be a very useful tool. It's part of our framework. It's basically one of the, the, the pieces of the puzzle in our framework. Now, I'm looking at Ohm's law. And remember, if you give me any edge, you know, let's just look at, look at that one between two and three, and there's a current along there, WB, then Ohm has told me that WB would be minus CB uh, X3 minus X2. That's what Ohm says. Now here's what I'm going to do. This is just a simplification. We're going to relax this later. Okay. I'm going to assume that in my, um, in my circuit here, my graph, the conductances of all of the uh, edges, the, the conductors in this graph are one. Just for simplicity, we'll relax this later. Okay. By the way, one thing I'd just like to say while I'm here as a little detour is because we're doing physics now, all of the quantities here, by the way, have what are called dimensions. So, so this is a current um, and that has a particular, you know, physical set of dimensions. So does the conduct. So by the way, it's not very, uh, not very clear that I've got the minus sign now. Let me emphasize that minus sign. Um, then this conductance has a, a dimension and so do voltages. OK, I'm going to talk about dimensions uh, in a separate lecture. OK, but let's just suppose that um, all of the dimensions here are, have been kind of taken into account. And these are just the uh, the non-dimensionalized numbers. OK, um, I would like to ask, how can I write my Ohm's law, that or that, using my incidence matrix A? Well, I'm noticing here that this thing, look, um, this thing over here is my voltage difference. Or now that my voltages are potentials, it's my potential difference. So do you remember that I introduced this quantity called E, which was just defined to be A times X, okay? Which was the, 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 the vector of potential differences across the nodes, okay? Across the edges connecting the nodes. So is it not true now that because I've taken my conductances to be one, is it not clear to you all that the, 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 vector, the, the vector of uh, currents is in this case just minus E, which is indeed by this just minus AX. So this is Ohm's law for the whole circuit now, written very compactly using my incidence matrix. I love it. It's encoded Ohm's law for me under the assumption, simple assumption, just to simplify things for now, that the conductances are all unity. Now, Kirchhoff, remember, he told me things about the net currents out of each node. And we'll come back to exactly what he said about it later, but how do we write the net currents out of each node? Well, remember, the currents are the edge fluxes. The net edge fluxes out of each node were what I called in the last lecture, I believe, uh, minus A transposed W, where W was the, the, uh, the edge fluxes. Okay? This was the divergence of the edge fluxes, which gives you the, uh, the divergence at the nodes. Okay? Remember, this was a. This is now a four by four matrix for this a vector for this uh, graph. Now, let me combine this. This is Kirchhoff's current law. Let me combine. I'm combining the two laws that my electrical engineer told me: Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff tells me about F, okay? But I know that it's this by in my framework is just this, and then this is just this. By Ohm. My goodness, look at this. By this little sequence of circumstances, I have now got this beautiful expression that relates 
my voltages at the at the terminals in my electrical language with the net currents out of those nodes those terminals and they're connected by this beautiful quantity here it's a matrix and look at it um this is a matrix and guess what i'm going to call this k and i will do for the rest of the um course and let me give myself a little bit more space here k is a very important quantity i want to write it in big letters it is the Laplacian, or some people say the graph Laplacian, or the discrete Laplacian. It's up to you. I just call it the Laplacian. Okay, Laplacian. Okay, and this is just defined to be A transpose A, where A is the incidence matrix we already know all about. Okay, it's a beautiful thing, and um, we're going to come back to this in the next lecture.